Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. So, this video is going to be about the epagomenal days in the Coptic and Egyptian calendar. And specifically, rituals against the demons of the goddess Sekhmet. The epagomenal days. So the calendar actually has 360 days, but that creates a discrepancy. So five extra days had to be added and in the case of leap years, six extra days. Originally, the Egyptian New Year began when the dog star, who was the goddess Sothis, rose in the sky. And for a time, this coincided with the annual inundation, the flooding of the Nile which brought fertility to their fields. However, over time, there was a drift. A drift started happening between the time when Sothis would rise in the sky and the beginning of the Nile's flooding. And so eventually, the calendar, which still exists today, and is kept by the Coptic Church. Eventually it was standardized to begin on the day of the Gregorian calendar, September 11th. These epagomenal days are either the five or the six days depending on if it is a leap year or not, leading up to the new year. And these days are somewhat of a liminal time. It is a time when demons can run rampant. It is a time when you cast out all of those evils in preparation for the new year. There is also a story regarding the birth of many of the gods that you're familiar with. So, um, Nut and Geb, the goddess of the sky and the god of the earth, were very in love. And uh, Nut became pregnant with Geb's children. And everyone was a little bit upset about their union. And so, um, the sun god, Ray, had made a proclamation that Nut could not give birth on any day of the calendar year. And the god Thoth, in all of his wisdom, decided to bargain with the god of the moon, Khonsu. And they played a game uh, in order for Thoth to win a certain number of days to be tacked on to the end of the year in which Nut could give birth. So uh, leap years, calendar day zero, would be a feast to the god Thoth. The first day of the tiny month is the birthday of Osiris. The second day is the birthday of Horus the Elder. So of course there's Horus, who is the son of Isis and Osiris. And then there is Horus the Elder, 
who is also a falcon-headed god, and things get a little confusing from there, but just remember that the second day is his birthday. The third day is the birthday of the god Set. The fourth day is the birthday of Isis, and the fifth day is the birthday of the goddess Nephthys. Now I wanted to tell you this story because it is pertinent, of course, to the origins of the Epagomenal days. In the Coptic calendar it is called Pikogi and Avat. Um, I'm not 100% on my pronunciation. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any tips. And um, so I wanted to kind of tell you about the origins of the calendar. However, um, my devotion, of course, is to the goddess Sakhmet. And so the part of the Epagomenal days, which is most important to me, is the driving out of Sakhmet's demons. And today I will be doing these rituals with you so that on the first day of the new year, with Rompet, uh, we can go into the new year with health, vitality, and without demons clawing at our doorsteps. So the first of these incantations also involves the use of two vulture feathers. These look very much like they probably are vulture feathers. Although, disclaimer, I found them on the ground, so I'm not entirely sure. But as you will see with some of the later parts of this ritual, the intention and the symbolism is what is important. So the vulture feathers are sacred to the goddess Nechbet, who was a vulture goddess, and Nechbet and Sechmet, obviously, work very closely together. So Nechbet is going to ensure our safety throughout the new year with the aid of these vulture feathers to put it in very oversimplified terms. As I go through the incantation, you'll get a better idea of the totality. All of the incantations I will be reciting in this video come from James Henry Breasted's translation of the Edwin Smith papyrus. Most of that text is a medical text and talks about how to drive different sicknesses from the body. There was not as much separation, of course, back then between ritual and medicine whether that is for better or for worse. So 
I'm going to put these feathers all around your body while I say this incantation. And this will keep you safe throughout the new year. O oh, flame in his face, presider over the horizon, speak thou to the chief of the Hemsut house, who makes Osiris first of the land to flourish. O oh, Nechbet, lifting the earth to the sky for her father. Come thou, bind the two feathers around me, around me that I may live and flourish, because I possess this white one. The first is the great one, dwelling in Heliopolis. The second is Isis. The third is Nephthys. While I am subject to thee. O oh, Caesar of the Great One, son of Sachmet, mightiest of the mighty, son of the diseased demon, Deneb, son of Hathor, mistress of the crown, and flutter of the streams. When thou voyagest in the celestial ocean, when thou sailest in the morning bark, thou hast saved me from every sickness. And then we keep the feathers together. And tuck them away in a safe place. And if you keep those feathers with you throughout the year, they will keep you safe. Incantation against this year. With the breath of every evil wind. Horus, Horus, healthy despite Sakhmet, is around all my flesh for life. So for the next incantation, A man was supposed to take a stick of a certain type of wood and walk around the outside of his house. In the text, it is called this wood, but uh, like many of the ancient recipes, scholars are not entirely sure what kind of plant was used. So I am opting to use smoke cleansing with this Palo Santo to cleanse your area.
make sure I get it lit properly. Withdraw ye, disease demons. The wind shall not reach me, that those who pass by may pass by to work a disaster against me. I am Horus, who passes by the diseased ones of Sakhmet. Even Horus, Horus, healthy despite Sachmet. I am the unique one, son of Bastet. I die not through thee. So these next two charms do not have any specific tools associated with them. And I'm just going to take this opportunity to pluck, 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 pluck some of your energies away. abomination that came forth out of Buto. O Meskanet, that came forth out of Heliopolis. O men, O gods, O spirits, O dead, be ye far from me. I am the abomination. And you have to understand that when I say that, that is to mean that you have become something that is even more frightening than the demons who are trying to attack you. <sighs> I am the healthy one in the way of the passerby. <sighs> Shall I be smitten? While I am healthy, I have seen the great disaster. <sighs> oh, this fever, do not assail me, for I am the one who has come forth out of the disaster. <sighs> Be thou far from me. this next one. I have a band of linen 
and on this band of linen I have inscribed the names of Osiris, Bastet, and Sekhmet. And I have done so with frankincense ink. Smell it. Yeah. I love the smell of frankincense. Which is important if you are involved in any kind of ritual magic. And if it's okay, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to tie it around your neck for the next recitation. Is that okay? Okay, great. There we go. Is that tight or anything? Okay, good. Oh, jubilation, jubilation, take not this, my heart, nor this, my breast, for Sekhmet. Take not my liver, for Osiris, in order that the hidden things that are in Buto may not, shall not, enter into my seat on the morning of counting the Horus I. Even every male spirit Every female spirit, every male dead, every female dead, the form of every animal, the ones which the crocodile has taken, the one which the serpent has stung. The one which is perished by the knife. Or the one who died in his bed. Ye demons of disease. Of the followers of the year. And its yield. Lo, Horus, even Horus, healthy despite Sekhmet, is around all my flesh for life. <sighs> and you might have noticed uh, one characteristic of a lot of Egyptian incantations is associating the practitioner with a particular deity, taking the form of that deity. So in the Egyptian Book of the Dead, it would have been Osiris, and they refer to the deceased as the Osiris. And here in these rites, the practitioner or reciter is being associated with the god Horus. So this next recitation, the next spell, is the assumption that one has swallowed a fly, which was a carrier of pestilence. And that swallowing this fly has brought this pestilence into the person. And this incantation is meant to have that pest, 
pass harmlessly through the person so that they will not become sick. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to fluff your aura up a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah? That's something you would like? All right. So, the mouth of this man, who is under my fingers, and so forth, is the mouth of a hungry calf. When he comes forth from his mother's womb, this insect, which has entered into this, his belly, although he has entered, shall come forth alive, issuing to the ground as earth or as excrement, without injuring his belly, but coming forth as excrement from him, having been assigned to Akeru. It's a little bit weird to think of. The coffin texts, we might go into that later. They had a lot of spells so that people wouldn't have to eat excrement in the afterlife. So, again, there is a flower mentioned in this text. But we're not quite sure what kind of flower it is. However, it is called a nephret flower, which means that it is very beautiful. One characteristic of these incantations is that the antithesis of the demonic energies are used to drive the demonic energies out. So they would have used something very beautiful to drive out the demons. In this case, they would have tied this nufret flower to a piece of desk wood with a strip of linen. But because I'm not quite sure what kind of flower that is, I'm going to have you focus on this ring while I perform the incantation. Thy messengers are consumed, O Sekhmet. Thy demons of disease retreat, O Bastet. The year does not pass by to work disaster against me. Thy breath does not reach me. I am Horus over the diseased ones of Sekhmet. I am thy Horus, O Sekhmet. I am thy unique one, O Buto. I die not by thee. I die not by thee. I am the rejoicing one. I am the jubilating one. O son of Bastet, descend not upon me. O dweller, in the Sepsepu, approach me not, draw not near me. I am the king in the midst of his shelter. And any time you fear demonic presence, remember the image of this
beautiful ring. Sometimes very beautiful things can drive out very ugly things. And finally, we've made it to the eighth incantation. And this has to do with a shamus flower. So in the text, Breasted conjectures that the shamus flower might have been common in marshes and thus have been good cover for small fowl and other animals hiding in that marsh. But I thought it would be fun to eat some candied hibiscus together. So we're going to be using that for the incantation. You can see how the blossom is all curled up. They do have hibiscus in Egypt, so it's not totally off the mark, but kind of off the mark. But the important, the most important thing behind any ritual that you do is your intention. A shamus flower is on me. The abomination of thy followers. Thy diseased ones avoid me. The stretching of thy snare avoids me. I am the escaped one of thy birds. Horus, Horus, healthy despite Sekhmet, is all around my flesh for life. And then, if you want to eat some of this hibiscus, yeah, here. Yeah, isn't it tasty? I love it. I love hibiscus. I could live off of candied hibiscus, honestly. So those are the eight incantations for the epagaminal days to drive off the pests, the demons associated with the goddess Sekhmet. I did use very anglicized pronunciations of the god names. I am working on, I'm hoping next year, I will have um, transliterated the hieroglyphics, which are also included in the text by Breasted. So I am working on that, but it's more important, as I mentioned before, for the intention and the strength of will to be there. And so because that is the case, I wanted to make sure I felt very confident that you and I would both understand what was being said. And I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. I am very excited to be sharing this with all of you. If you would like the video, and maybe share it, 
That does help me out immensely. Your subscriptions to my channel are also greatly appreciated. And until I see you again very soon, <laughs>